Hi. Today we wanted to talk with you about our over under billing report, specifically written for Sage 100 contractor. Uh, this kind of a report, sometimes referred to as WIP, work in progress, others refer to it as over under billing. Uh, it's not just for your taxes. It's not just for the end of the year tax reporting. It's actually a great tool that you can use regularly and you don't need to be CPA to take advantage of it. As a powerful management tool, the over under billing review can help you even out those peaks and values in your income statement. It can help you manage your cash flow. It can identify problem jobs early. And if you're preparing a monthly borrowing base certificate for your bank anyway, it should be part of your monthly process reviewing the over under billing. So what is over under billing? What is this work in progress tool all about? So let's just use some simple, a simple analogy. So we have a job for $1,000 and we are 50% done and we have billed 50% of the contract. Perfect. We are 50% done and we build 60% of the contract, we are overbilled, which is actually going to help our cash. If we are 50% done and we've only billed 40% of the contract, we are underbilled and we will potentially have a cash issue in future months. So let's get right into the demo. Over and under billing is where the observed information from the field meets the reality of the office things like accounts payable, payroll transactions, all the billing transactions. And if done right, it is where the differences between the field and the field observations and the office and the meat and potatoes of the transactions that are entered into the accounting system are reconciled in a truly meaningful way. So to generate an over under billing worksheet, first thing I'm going to do is check my configuration. So in this case, I'm going to select just my current uh, open and completed jobs, recently completed jobs. I will include all jobs with current activity in case I missed one. Maybe there's something that was closed, but I didn't realize it and there was activity and I wanna make sure it ends up on my over under billing. My change orders. And then last, I'm gonna verify the accounting period that I wanna include. In this case, I'm gonna do the first half of the year from period one to period six. Click save. And there's the information that I need. Now it's not in a workable format yet. So what I want to do is export that to an Excel worksheet that I can use to build a truly valuable over under analysis. Click export to Excel. In this case, I'm going to just take a basic over under billing analysis. I'm going to give it a name where I want to save it. And it generates the file. So we'll go ahead and view that worksheet. Reviewing the columns in a general sense for the over or under billing worksheet that was just generated, the white columns are data that has been pulled directly from Sage 100 Contractor. The yellow columns are columns where we can interact with the spreadsheet or worksheet and enter information we know about the job that would not necessarily be captured in Sage 100 at this point. And last, the green columns are the columns where there is an adjustment made to the default over under billing. So let's kind of work our way through a couple of these. So the first row indicates historical job costs. Well, that's not something that I want to include in my over under billing at any level. So I just turn that row off. The second column is a little more interesting, or the second row, which is Williams Post Office. In this case, I'm showing an over billing of $27,000. So I talked to my project manager and he's saying, no, that's not possible. Well, first off, we have $20,000 of work we've already completed, but we expect to get a change order. Well, where's that change order? Well, we haven't requested it yet, but we know we'll get it. So let's put an allowance for that $20,000 into the over under billing analysis for Williams Post Office. So we'll put in $20,000 of unapproved change orders that were pretty sure we're going to get. Let's continue over to the right. We can include unposted accrued labor. Well, there isn't any in this case, so we're going to skip that. And finally, we get to an estimated cost to complete, which, by the way, is an art of its own. And please check our other demo regarding doing cost to complete effectively. At this point in time, we're showing that there's about 80, 20%, 80% of the job is complete and about 20% of my budget remains to complete the job. So that's my default estimated cost to complete. However, 
in talking with the project manager. And after he analyzes his job, he says, no, it won't be uh, $97,000 to do this job. It'll be about $50,000 to complete the job. So we enter our $50,000. And now we can see that we went from being $27,000 overbilled to $47,000 underbilled. So that is a net change of $60,000 to our income statement. That is significant. We continue through the rest of these jobs and save and return back to our application. So how do we get this information into our income statement? Well, upon returning to the Syscon over under billing management, we click create journal entry. We select the worksheet we have been working on that we created, then we entered that we had entered our own analysis of cost to complete, unapproved change orders, and things like that. Just click start. What posting period we're going to use or it's intended for. And of course, I ran this for period one to six, so we're going to post it to period six. And I can see that I've successfully processed that worksheet. I've read it. I pushed recurring journal transactions into Sage. Having created the journal entries from the Syscon over under billing tool, we want to go into Sage and take a look at them. So we go to the 1-4 recurring journal transactions. And the first transaction that we created according to the application was number four. And there it is, period six, fiscal year 2015 over under billing entry. And here is the proper format of a journal entry to post my over under billing analysis to my income statement. And we are done. This was a very straightforward example. However, to meet more complex needs, this program is packed with over under specific information and features to fit the needs of any company. A few of the many options are compute and show the first and last day worked on the job, show approved and open change orders, show committed cost, check build and unbuild entries from the Sage 100 contractor automated TNM module. Calculate life-to-date, year-to-date, and month-to-date revenue, billing, and cost calculations that will actually tie to your income statement. Show the percent complete from last entered progress invoice, and much, much, much more. If you have any special requirements, we can incorporate any of these options into your specific over-under billing worksheet. Click on the link provided below to get more information on this discount kind of application or any of our other many other advanced tools for Sage 100 contractor users. Thank you.